Thanks, Kevin. Uh, it was good to pray together, and it's been good to have this time of focused prayer, right? For the last 21 days, we started December 31st with this initiative of 21 days of prayer, and um, I preached on that on that day, and, and we just started praying more together. Um, we encourage you to pray individually, and I hope and I sense that there's been more prayer in our congregation and in our lives. I know I've been praying more, and I've been thinking more of you and, and, and people within this congregation who I know need prayers. And so I've been praying more, and even just last night as I was thinking and preparing for the message this morning, just prayed over our congregation and for many of you specifically who I know have specific needs. And so we want to encourage you, like Kevin said, that this is not going to end after 21 days. Uh, but we do want to invite you. Tomorrow we are having a culmination of our 21 days of prayer. Uh, we're going to have a worship and prayer night tomorrow night. And so we encourage you to come. Uh, 6.30, right here in our sanctuary. We've invited other churches. Uh, we've invited people in our community. We encourage you to come and invite others who would be blessed by this time. And we're going to have a focused time to come together and pray. Our worship team is going to have some music for us to, to pray and to sing through and to worship as we pray, and it's just going to be a wonderful time together. And so we encourage you to come and join us tomorrow night as we commence 21 days of prayer and becomes this more of something that we do on a regular basis together as a congregation. So please join us tomorrow night. So this year we kicked off the year talking about prayer and having this emphasis on prayer and then on getting into the Word of God. And the importance of the Word of God. And so if you haven't been here, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to the messages so far that we've had this year. Uh, and if you're wondering how you can do that, you can always go to our Welcome Center and sign up for a CD. And so we can burn a CD for you of the previous sermons if you weren't here. Um, you can also go to our website. On our website, we have all of our messages on there. Uh, and then we, you can go to, uh, we have a YouTube channel. You can go onto YouTube or you can also get the app. We keep talking about this app. If you have a smartphone, you can get an app and you can actually pull up the sermons right on your phone. And so we encourage you to go back and listen to those because we are walking through the book of Colossians together and looking at the importance of the Word of God one verse at a time. And I'm excited because Colossians is a great book. It's this letter uh, to, the, to the church in Colossae that Paul wrote. And there's so much in there and so many good scriptures in this short book. And so I encourage you to go back and listen to those messages and then continue to study through Colossians with us as we walk through it uh, one week at a time, one verse at a time. And so through the first two weeks of the year here, we're through Colossians chapter 1. We've gone through verses 1 through 8. And today we're going to continue on in verses 9 through 12. So go ahead and pull out your Bible. And if you didn't bring a Bible today, we want to encourage you to grab the Pew Bible in front of you and open up to Colossians chapter 1. It's on page 983 of your Pew Bible. And we're going to read this together. We're going to be in Colossians. We will turn over into the Old Testament for a little bit uh, for one reference. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to be in Colossians this morning. And we just want to start by reading Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. It's Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. So the first thing that I noticed when I, when I read this and I was, as I was preparing to put together this sermon, the first thing I noticed was that he was praying. Did you catch that right away? That Paul is praying for the Colossians. Prayer is important. We can't say it enough. We're going to keep saying it every week. Prayer is important. 
We need to make prayer more of a priority in our lives. And we're trying to do that as a church, and we're challenging you to do that as an individual. Remember, the writer of, of Colossians is a, the Apostle Paul, and he is writing to the church in Colossae. And this letter was included, this letter is included in the canon of the scriptures because of its value to Christians beyond Colossae or Laodicea or Hierapolis, those towns that it was read to and those churches that it was read to when Paul originally wrote this letter. And I believe that God has a lot to say to us through Paul in this book. And the section we are in right now is one of Paul's many prayers for the believers of Christ. In almost every letter that Paul wrote in the New Testament, there's prayers that he wrote for the people that he was writing to and for the believers of that time. Prayer is important. And this section that we're in right now, verses 3 through 14, are one long prayer that Paul is writing to the Colossians. And it's important for us to look at this prayer, understand what he's saying to the Colossians, and then to understand that Paul is speaking this to all believers. So if you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you believe in Jesus, Paul is writing to you today. So we need to listen up because God has got something to say today. I want to go back and start now. Verse 9, we're going to go one verse at a time and just look at what God is saying through Paul here. And so verse 9 says, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. When I, when I read that, it says right away, from the day we heard. What is he talking about? If you go back to verse 4, Paul says in verse 4, he says that they heard of their faith in Jesus Christ. And so Paul is writing to the Colossians because he heard from Epaphras about the faith of these believers. And that's what he's referencing there when he says, we heard. And so because of what we heard, we've not ceased to pray for you. Paul was excited to hear about the faith of the Colossians. And so he and Timothy and others had been praying for the believers there. Think about that for a minute. Do you get excited when you hear about the faith of others? Does it, does it compel you to pray for them? I got excited when Zach just shared about the faith of his family, praying for his grandfather, and Zach's dad praying for his father. It compels me to pray more when I hear about stories and testimonies of faith. And that is what Paul is talking about here. And in verse 9, he says that you may be filled. Be filled. That you may be filled. Be filled with what, you ask? He tells us to be filled with the knowledge of God's will, spiritual wisdom, and understanding. And today we're going to look at why is that so important? Why is it so important for us to understand God's will? To have knowledge and wisdom. That word knowledge, the Greek word in there is epignosis. If you've been through our quest study class, we've talked about that. If you've been through that class, you know between gnosis and epignosis. Gnosis is scientific knowledge. Epignosis is relational knowledge, heart knowledge, complete knowledge. And so what Paul is writing about when he says you need to be filled as believers with knowledge, it's, just, it's not just the scientific knowledge that God is who he is, but it's a relational knowledge, a heart knowledge of God and who he is and what his will is. And the only way we'll ever really know who God is and have a relationship with God is if we're in his word and we're spending time in prayer. And that's what this is all about. 
That's what the, the letter to the Colossians is all about. And that's what we at Bayside Baptist Church are all about. Having a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God the Father. And that relationship comes through prayer and the Word. It's so important. You know, out in the garage, a couple of weeks ago, I visited our men. Our men's ministry meets on Wednesday nights in the garage, and they're having this special Tuesday night uh, Bible study that you saw a little bit about, but they're still meeting every Wednesday night in the garage, and so we encourage men to come and join them. And a couple of weeks ago, I joined those men, and I was encouraged by Matt, who's the leader of the men there. He shared some scriptures from the book of Proverbs. And I hadn't planned this sermon out at all at this point. You know, it was in my mind that we were coming down the road in Colossians, and he shared specifically Proverbs chapter 2 about wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding. And it encouraged me and it encouraged the men that night that were there to seek knowledge, to seek understanding, to seek God's will. And so I do want to take a moment and turn back to Proverbs chapter 2 today. And so if you would, you can go back to Proverbs chapter 2 in your Bible. It's page 528 in the Pew Bible. We also will have it up on the screens in just a second. And I just want to read. You see, Paul wasn't the only person to ever talk about this value and this importance. In the Proverbs, it talks about the value of wisdom. Chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. The whole chapter, and actually all of Proverbs, is all about wisdom. But there is a football game on later today. A bunch of you are wearing purple today, I noticed. So we can't read all of Proverbs this morning. So we'll read 11 verses. All right, so Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Okay? And I want to just read this, and then we'll just see how it correlates with Colossians chapter 1, where we're walking through as a church this season. Proverbs 2, starting in verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul discretion will watch over you understanding will guard you this is god's will for you and this was paul's desire for the colossians and i believe for all believers to be filled with wisdom understanding and knowledge this is a key point of Colossians, seeking knowledge. I ask you today, do you seek knowledge? Do you seek understanding of the Lord's will? Do you sp seek spiritual wisdom today? Let's go back now to Colossians. We'll step now now to verse 10. He says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Remember, in verse 9, Paul encourages us to be filled, to be filled with that knowledge. Now the question is why? Why be filled? Why is it important that we have this knowledge? Why do you keep talking about knowledge and wisdom and understanding? Verse 10, Paul says the reason we need to be filled is so that we can walk in the Lord. We do this to please Him. When we're walking with the Lord, we bear fruit. 
And that leads to, like he says in verse 10, increasing our knowledge of God. And when we're increasing our knowledge of God, our relationship with God grows. Amen. And so that is why we keep saying, pray, get in the word. Because we want to see everybody that's a part of this community and this church to know the Lord and to know him well and to have a relationship with him. And again, the only way we can do that is through prayer and the reading and studying and digging into God's word. It's so important. It is so important and vital for our walk with Christ. And so our relationship grows when we increase in our knowledge of God. Speaking of knowledge and walking with the Lord, if you go back to Proverbs, it even mentions that. Proverbs 2, verse 7, right there. We just read it. It says in verse 7, He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. So Paul is telling us, walk in a manner manner that is worthy of the Lord. The Proverbs are telling us, walk in integrity. When we're in the word and we're in prayer, those things happen naturally. It becomes a part of our life because we have a close relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Walk with integrity. Seek wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Be filled. Be filled so that you can walk with the Lord. Verse 11. Being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy. So we we are filled. He challenges us to be filled so that we can walk with the Lord and be filled with the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of God so that you may be strengthened. You ever feel weak in your faith? You ever feel like overwhelmed by the ways of this world? Maybe overwhelmed by sin? Overwhelmed by the darkness? Overwhelmed by depression? You ever feel that? The Word will give us strength. When we're filled with God's knowledge and understanding and spiritual wisdom, it gives us strength. Strength to overcome. Strength to overcome anything. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Paul wrote that in the Philippians, one book prior to Colossians. As he wrote to the Philippians, he wrote that. God gives us strength to overcome sin, darkness, depression, Whatever this world has for us, we can overcome. This knowledge gives us power. It gives us power. Have you heard that before? Knowledge is power? You might have heard that before. In, in, in the secular world, they, they say that knowledge is power, but it's true in the spiritual world. Knowledge is power. Take a moment. And just think for a moment where you are weak in your life. You can overcome anything with the knowledge and the power in the word of Jesus Christ. Be filled. Be filled. This knowledge, he says, gives us endurance, patience, joy. Endurance to run the race. Patience to survive the race. Joy to enjoy, to cherish, to appreciate the race. Doesn't life feel like a race sometimes? Do you sometimes feel like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it? Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom gives us the endurance to run this race of life. Patience to survive the things that try our patience. And joy to be filled and to enjoy and to cherish and appreciate the race that we are in. Take a moment, even right now, 
to just be filled with the joy of the Lord. I'm filled with the joy of the Lord today because of you. I come here this morning carrying whatever weight I may carry in my personal life and in my family life and in the world around me. But when I come in here and we worship and I hear a testimony like Zach shared today and we pray together and I hear the prayers of men of this church and I see the faces of friends and family members, people who I know are facing some of the same battles. I am filled with the joy of the Lord today. Be encouraged today. Look around this room. The joy of the Lord is in this place because it is in each and every one of you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah and amen. We can be filled with that joy. We can be filled with that knowledge. We are strengthened by the Lord. The point today, if you haven't heard it yet, if you haven't written it down, seek wisdom. Seek understanding. Seek knowledge of God's will. Verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. You know, when we are filled with this knowledge and wisdom and understanding, it causes us to be more thankful. It really does. We owe everything to God. We owe everything to Him. We give thanks to God for everything. But we give thanks to God who allows us to share in an inheritance because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We get a share of God's inheritance. Now, if that doesn't bring you joy today, I don't know what would. Because this world and this life is full of terrible, bad, negative things. There's a lot of good things too, but it's filled with terrible, negative things. But to just think about that we share in the inheritance of God who created the universe, that brings me great joy. Think about that. When we move on to heaven, to join in the inheritance of the saints. This is good stuff. The Bible is full of good stuff. Chapter 1, we're only in verses 9 through 12. We're just getting started. We will get deeper into that inheritance that he talks about there at the end of verse 12. We're going to get deeper into that and the importance of what that means and how that affects our lives and how it affects each and every one of us. But that's next week. So what's the take-home today? It's very simple. The take-home today from Paul as he writes to the Colossians, and as we read it aloud, just like they read it thousands of years ago, they took this letter that Paul wrote from prison. Paul and Timothy wrote this letter, and they brought it to the church and somebody stood up in front of the church and read it out loud. And the body of Christ, the church, was encouraged and challenged. And that church there carried on in their desire and in their faith and in seeking of the knowledge and understanding of God. And so the take home for us is the same be filled with the knowledge of God's will, with spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you can walk with integrity. And so that you can increase your knowledge and your relationship with Jesus Christ. So that you can be strengthened for endurance and patience and joy. So that you can give thanks to God, whom we owe it all to. Whom we owe it all to. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 12. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, church. Asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding 
so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. That is good stuff. My prayer today, our prayer at Bayside this season, is that it would be so simple for us to read the word and go and walk in it. You see, today's message isn't this complicated message that Pastor Tom is trying to shove down your throats. It's really simple. Seek him and his knowledge and understanding and will and build a relationship with Jesus through that knowledge. And the way that we do that is through prayer and the word. And so my prayer for you is that you would go home today and read the word. And that you would go home and pray for each other. Pray for those who you know that aren't believers. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And continue to seek the knowledge and understanding of our Lord Jesus and God the Father. And when we do that, it fills us with great joy. It fills us with great joy. And it draws us closer and closer to God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, my prayer today as we close is that Bayside Baptist Church would take a stand for you. That we would be willing to push aside the ways of this world. That we would be willing to turn from our sins. And God, that we would be willing to seek you as a church, and as individuals to seek your knowledge and your understanding and your wisdom. And God, my prayer is we do that together as a body of Christ, that you would show us your power and your glory and amazing things as this community of believers comes together in your name, seeking you. God, show us your mighty power as we stand before you, as we stand in this world, separated from this world, as believers in Jesus Christ, as seekers of your will. And God, may we be men and women of your word, yearning to live out your word every single day, God. And may we walk in a manner that is worthy of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior with integrity, with your integrity. And God, I pray that when we do that, it will change our world for you. Show us your glory, God. Show us your mighty power, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we close with one last song?